Good evening. Welcome to QUT Web News. Good evening. A long-awaited report into the deadly Grantham floods has found no one could have prevented the devastation. Walter Sofronoff QC, who led the Commission of Inquiry, says the storm was a freak event of nature. Twelve people died when floodwaters tore through the town, small town in January 2011. After almost five years in the waiting and $2.5 million later, the floods have been labelled an act of God. In January 2011, a wall of water swept down the Lockyer Valley, claiming 12 lives. I hope that this inquiry does give some closure uh, to the people, to the families that went through this horrific ordeal. It was suggested that a levy associated with the Grantham Quarry may have been to blame. But Commissioner Walter Sofronoff ruled that out. The water then goes straight into the creeks. The creeks then lead to the Lockyer Creek. The Lockyer Creek runs past Grantham and there you are. The freak flood is being compared to a similar event in 1893, but no lives were lost. Commissioner Sofronoff has made no recommendations to suggest how the community could be more prepared in the future. He stressed that due to the nature of the flood, nobody could have done anything. The courage of the Grantham community was recognised in this book published a year after the tragedy. The deaths in Grantham cannot be permitted to become a mere statistic. The government fully backs the findings. They have had a chance to have their voices heard. Um, and that's the, that's the very best that I can do for my government. What residents are being asked to do now is to understand their environment so they can keep themselves and their families safe in the future. Simona Varga, QUT News. Federal Opposition Leader Bill Shorten has revealed his plan to fund 10 major infrastructure projects across the country. Queensland would be a real winner. But the Liberals have slammed the plan, saying it lacks any detail. The $10 billion concrete fund is aimed at spurring private investment in public projects. Five on the radar in Queensland, including the Cross River Rail Tunnel, the next Gold Coast Light Rail and the M1. Announcing the project in Brisbane today, Bill Shorten said investment is long overdue. Every dollar we invest returns three to our economy. These are the concrete benefits a viable, productive infrastructure development. Although he said he was favourably disposed to a new stadium for Townsville, he also said federal labour wasn't committed. It is an important investment for creating jobs in that region and it's something that he said that he will talk to his colleagues about and give due consideration to. So I think it is on uh, the radars of both um, political parties at the moment. The aim is to use an independent body to kickstart projects before handing them over to private investors. Taking the politics out of infrastructure, putting the long-term generational decision-making at the heart. The Turnbull government has its doubts about where the money's coming from. Of course, funding is an issue. The plan is to tap into Australia's $4 trillion superannuation pool to pay for the projects. Whether or not Australians will approve is yet to be seen. Queensland's opposition says Federal Labor's infrastructure plan is nothing more than a thought bubble that lacks any detail. Nick Kelly, QUT News. Brisbane City Council is launching a major crackdown on illegal parking in school zones. Special patrols will target 23 suburban schools as students return from holidays to begin Term 4. Congestion around schools is an everyday and sometimes frustrating occurrence in Brisbane and the City Council has had enough. Uh, we're here today uh, to give the heads up to motorists that Council will be proactively enforcing parking restrictions around school during the coming term. The Council is armed with a fleet of eight high visibility enforcement vehicles and offenders won't know they've been caught until they receive a letter in the mail. We're making it very clear that we're out and about. Um, the vehicles do have dash cameras. Council has received over 500 complaints this year about illegal parking. And over 2,000 drivers have been caught illegally parking in school zones since January. And authorities say that parents who can should avoid using the car to decrease congestion in school zones. Where it's at all possible, I would have thought it was quite useful for children to walk, even with their parents uh, to school. 
Another frustration for motorists is the cost of inner-city off-street parking. According to the RACQ, Brisbane now holds the title of being the nation's most expensive city. Chloe Tenorio, QUT News. A teenager remains in custody tonight after four people were arrested in Sydney's West over the murder of a police accountant. Detectives are investigating whether more students are known supporters of Islamic State. Police have reviewed security video from Parramatta Mosque. The footage shows 15-year-old Farhad Jabbar with several men, just hours before carrying out the shooting at police headquarters last Friday. Detectives believe Jabbar was given the handgun at the mosque before the attack. A Middle Eastern crime gang is being investigated over possible links to the weapon. Four men were being detained in a series of dawn raids Wednesday morning. Three of them, including 16-year-old classmate of the teenage shooter, were released from custody late yesterday without charge. An 18-year-old remains in police custody as investigations continue. In the wake of Curtis Chang's murder, there's renewed concern about what is happening to young minds in schools. New South Wales Premier Mike Baird has ordered work on counter-radicalisation to be fast-tracked. Bianca Benchetti, QUT News. A little-known family-owned business is celebrating its success after taking out the Premier of Queensland's Export Award. Packer Leather is setting in a benchmark by going against the economic tide. While most businesses in the import market are struggling, this one, based at Narangbar, is booming. The local leather processor experienced one of its most successful years to date, exporting almost 85% of its high-quality kangaroo hide. It's definitely our attention to detail. Uh, we, we make leathers to very, very tight engineering tolerances and specifications that many other tanneries out there are unable to copy. Today, fourth and fifth generation packers operate one of Australia's biggest tanneries. And Packer Leather says a lot of its continued success comes down to good old family values. Uh, without their involvement and their support, the business wouldn't be around today. After 125 years of success, Packer Leather aren't resting on their laurels and are looking to the future. Completely committed to innovation and solving our customers' problems. And the current exchange rate is helping them to do just that. So much so, they've tipped another $3 million into the business. Amy Saunders, QUT News. Bathurst 1000 preparations are in full swing as drivers today completed three practice sessions. Chaz Moster topped the timesheets with the fastest ever set in an opening practice session. Thousands of fans have already started to pour into Mount Panorama. 200,000 people are expected over the weekend. Police are warning they won't tolerate bad behaviour and alcohol-related violence. And on the track, plenty of drama in the first practice session. It was a rocky start for 2011 champion Garth Tander. Four-time champion Jamie Wincup remains the clear favourite. Craig Lowndes looked on as partner Steve Richards took the wheel. Dedicated fans say they're excited to get started. It's just a wonderful place, the mountain is, to the atmosphere, the people. Well, I've been coming here for 51 years. There's a lot of focus on the all-female pairing of Simona Di Salvestro and Renee Gracie, the first in 17 years. Qualifying rounds begin tomorrow afternoon. Carissa Kemp, QUT News. In AFL, Essendon are demanding St Kilda's first round pick in return for Jake Carlisle, who has requested a trade to the Saints. Carlisle's playing future has been the subject of persistent speculation this year. The 24-year-old has named St Kilda as his preferred destination. The deal could be worth as much as $700,000 a season. Carlisle described the Saints as a perfect fit. Meanwhile, Sydney Swan superstar Lance Franklin will miss the club's best and fairest count tomorrow night as he continues with his recovery from mental health issues. And the Adelaide Crows could announce their new coach as early as Monday. The highly regarded West Coast assistant, Don Pike, is a hot favourite out of four official candidates. Ali Campbell, QUT News. Nothing screams summer like fresh, golden, juicy mangoes. 
Earlier this morning, a huge crowd turned out at the annual charity auction of the season's first mango tray. It has to be Australia's sweetest auction. It pits bidders against each other to vie for the title of mango king or queen. The bidding kicked off at $5,000 and from there it was mango money madness. But hopes of beating last year's $30,000 winning bid looked shaky. Take your time, have your conversations. But eventually, someone came up with the cash. Going, going, done and sold at $30,000. The new mango queen came from Smart Berries Farm near Gainda. No, I had no <laughs> idea that this was going to happen. <laughs> the proceeds will go to Queensland Diabetes and Life Education. This has been a wonderful partnership for, for Life Education. The mango auction is important because the health of our kids is important. Organisers are confident of cracking the $1 million mark at next year's auction. The Australian Mango Association has predicted a bumper crop this season. The Mango Queen says she will donate her golden tray to the Children's Hospital. Claire Overell, QUT News. <laughs> Time now for a look at the weather. Temperatures in the southeast today were all cooler. The Sunshine Coast, Brisbane and Ipswich all sat on a comfortable 26 degrees. Whilst down on the Gold Coast, they reached a top of 23. Now let's take a look at other capitals around the nation. Tomorrow's temps look like a repeat of today. With Sydney, Canberra and Melbourne staying in the mid-20s. But Adelaide, Perth and Darwin are all expected are all expecting a hotter day and should reach the low 30s. Finally, Hobart has dropped to almost jumper weather and 18. Looking at the forecast for the rest of Queensland and if you're heading inland, look for some shade with both Longreach and Mount Isa to hit the mid to low 30s. Whilst down on the eastern seaboard, it looks like a shower or two is on the increase. And now looking at Brisbane's three day outlook. We can expect more showers tomorrow, with Saturday heading to possible morning showers and Sunday showers clearing away but partly cloudy. That brings you up to date with the weather. And that's all the news we have for now. We'll be back tomorrow with more QUT web news. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>